Hello and welcome to the Gopher Mentor Winery Chat. This is episode 9. It's July 1st, 2020. And those of you who know the format, I pontificate about something of interest to winemakers for a few minutes, and then we go on to the topic of interest. Today we're going to talk about racking and the smart barrel in particular. But before we get there, I thought it would be interesting to show you a book that is not very serious at all. Um, it's a, a book by Ronald Cyril and it's called Something in the Cellar, The Wonderful World of Wine. And this is actually a beautiful book of illustrations. I just picked out a couple examples to show you uh, what they are. So if you can find this book, buy it. I bought this, I don't know, 20, 30 years ago, so I don't even know if it's still in print. But here's an example, look, The Wonderful World of Wine, Connoisseurs. What a beautiful illustration. Here's another one, How to Open a Bottle of Wine. So you see the colors, the moods, a uh, gorgeous book. Ronald Sear, The Wonderful World of Wine. Go out and buy it. Okay, so now let's get on with the topic for the day. We're going to talk about racking and we're going to do it smart barrel style. Smart style, smart barrel style. So let's talk about why we need to rack. Uh, for winemakers, it's much part of winemaking as is fermentation because after fermentation, we need to pass it the wine. We have to settle out the yeast that's been, we have to let things settle. Uh, malolactic fermentation may take place here. We have to let the whole thing stabilize. So some uh, tannins will drop out, some color will drop out, and also there are adjustments need to be made. Oaking, additives, blending, and obviously at the end result, you're going to either bottle it or you're going to age it for many years to bring out the true nature of the wine. The traditional way is using tanks and barrels. Um, you, this is my favorite photograph, people cleaning things. I hate cleaning things. Um, so that to me is one of the biggest problems. You need to clean it. And you need to clean it well because a dirty barrel will contaminate your wine. Retinomyces really comes mostly from the wood. And so if you have a contamination in your barrel room or in your barrels, it's going to spread everywhere and ruin your wine. It's also difficult to store partial volumes in barrels and tanks. And we'll talk about this in more detail. Also, there is the topping off labor. Every barrel has to be looked at every two months or three months or so and topped off. So the evaporative losses, leakage is all taken care of. There's a high risk of accidental oxidation. If you forget to top it off or it leaks or somehow it gets mishandled, you have ruined that batch of wine. And of course, with barrels, you have leakage, evaporation, all kinds of things happen. Also, the cost. Barrels are very expensive. A good barrel can set you back $500 to $1,000. And you can only use a barrel three or four times. After that, the barrel is essentially what they call a neutral barrel. It has no oakiness or tannicness to impart to the wine. It's just a container. So that leads to having to replace these barrels on an ongoing basis. Now with tanks, you don't have the issue of leakage and you can reuse them forever, but they're costly and they have to be installed. They have to have cooling systems, uh, plumbing, permits. Uh, so that makes racking wine uh, difficult in traditional way. See, the real problem is that this is all done in rigid containers. So you say you have a tank. Now when you drain the wine, you create headspace on top. And the headspace has got oxygen and it will react with the wine, oxidizing it. Now, there are custom tanks that are ones that have floating lids, so you can push the lid down as the volume goes down. But as most of you have used it, know that it's really a pain in the ass. The rubber gasket seal, it gets stuck up there, it leaks. Uh, you're never really sure of what's going on because you also cannot see the level of the wine relative to the, to the lid. Um, in barrels, it's even more messy because you have losses due to evaporation and the leakage. And again, the barrel is a rigid container. When I remove some wine or it evaporates or it leaks, I have a headspace up there. And the headspace is air. Now you could put in nitrogen or argon or something and make an inert gas top, but this is only a game that big wineries can play. It's very difficult for a small winery to have argon handling and seal tanks and so forth. So about five, maybe seven years ago, we decided that we had to do away with all this. And again, using our idea that 
can evolve from the go for measure to use single use flexible liners. The flexible liner contracts as the material is removed. So it never drains headspace. So we use single use liners. There's no cleaning. It's always guaranteed to be perfectly clean. The materials are FDA certified. There's no issue of leachables or odor from the liner. Best of all, there's no topping because as you remove the wine, the bag contracts. You're familiar with a bag in a box. Well, this is that on a grander scale. So no oxidation. And the beautiful part is you can store partial volumes forever. So say you have 60 gallons in a 60 gallon barrel. You take out 20 gallons, you have 40 gallons left. Now, in a conventional winery, you have to find another container that you can fill to the top. Or you've got to find some wine to top that barrel up. In our case, we can just leave that 40 gallons that's left in the liner, and there is no headspace, it'll last forever. And it's very inexpensive. Liners are $25 a liner, and the accessories which you can reuse are about 130 bucks. So this is how it works. This particular example is where we converted an old wooden barrel into a smart barrel. So we cut a square hole on top. The side cutout is just to show you something. The only real cutout is the top. And then we put in this patented dip tube. And I'll explain to you how the dip tube works. And then, of course, the dip tube is in a liner which is inside the barrel. Now, obviously, the wine never contacts the barrel. So you can use any old barrel, leaky barrel. It doesn't matter because you're never going to actually touch the barrel. Typically, you can buy a used barrel for not too much money, clean it up a little bit, and put your liner in, and you're good to go. The secret is in the dip tube. And it took me five or six years to work out this deceptively simple thing. Because all the other ideas I had had moving parts. And it always jam up or gum up. But the this dip tube, we finally got it down to where there are no moving parts whatsoever. The dip tube consists of a perforated stainless tube section. And I will show you how that works in a minute. There's a port where you can attach a hose to fill the bag lighter. You also remove the wine from there. In this system, you really want to pump wine in and pump wine out. Siphon can be done, but it's not a very efficient process. The red um, device on top of the dip tube is a relief valve. If you happen to have a secondary fermentation, malolactic, you generate some gas, it will let it escape. So you don't have a situation where the bag overinflates and blows up on you. It will be vented out to that little red pressure relief valve. And then on top, we have a sampling port. Now this sampling port is the same one that's used on the go fermenters. It, it's always shut off by itself. You push in a sampler, you can pull out a sample, and then when you remove the sampler, it shuts it off again. So there's no chance of air getting in. The other important thing is that we don't use uh, wine feeds. So we don't take things that we dip into the wine, which is in a, in a traditional barrel, take a sample, close the bung, move to the next one, do the same thing. We're putting this wine thief, a contaminated potentially wine thief, into each barrel. So one barrel has Brettanomyces, you might be spreading it with that wine thief to your entire winery. Here, nothing ever goes in. It's everything is sucked out. So here's a little uh, animation of how the system works. Uh, you, in this case, you see the liner inside a barrel. We're filling it, so we pump in the wine. It goes to the perforations, fills the bag to whatever level you want, and now your wine has no headspace. So actually, we vacuum out the headspace, and I'll show you how that's done in a bit. Then when you remove the wine, the bag simply collapses over the tube, and you don't have to worry about actually moving the take-up tube up or down. The perforated tube has a unique aspect to it. Due to the hydrostatics of the system, when you remove wine, it always takes the wine from the top first. And then as it, the wine level drops, the, the uh, liquid is taken from lower and lower. So you really don't have to attend to this process. You can simply set it up, walk away, and you will know that you're going from the clearest to the cloudiest. And then when you see your wine coming out cloudy, you'll know you're now in the lease. You can stop it. At that point, you open the system, take that line around, throw it away, put a new one in, put, wash the dip tube out, and you're good to go again. Now, we make it in some formats. Uh, we make it uh, where you can convert a wooden barrel into a smart barrel. And so the advantage is that you can use old barrels. It looks uh, pretty, like a real winery. Uh, and also, um, it, it, 
it's a, you have all the handling capabilities. You have uh, racks, you have uh, existing storage areas. So it's all designed around the barrels. You can use all that. And our barrels can be kept in standard seven inch spaced racks. In this system, you never take the barrel out because you never take the barrel out to clean it. The barrel is just a container. You can actually put the liner in without removing the barrel and you can remove the um, lees containing liner at the end, again, through the hole in the top of the barrel. You never move the barrel at all. So it saves you from having to lift heavy things from the top rack to the bottom rack and so forth. We also make it in a vertical drum kit, and this is very handy for in-process storage, for topping off storage. You just buy an inexpensive plastic drum and you get yourself a dip tube kit from us and uh, liners and you have basically a simple, easy to use um, smart barrel system anywhere you want. Now we also make a larger size, which is about 330 gallons, and you can use those liners in macro bins. You can stack them like you see this one here. This one has uh, about 250 gallons on each level. So that's 750 gallons of wine, could be three different wines, in a four foot by four foot floor space. So it's very compact. You can also use our go bases which we use for the fermenter um, as a uh, container for the smart barrel system. Now, the smart barrel system consists of the dip tube and the liner. And you need one of these for every installation that you have. So if you have four vertical drums, you'll need four dip tube kits, uh, one for each drum. Now, you only need one aspirator. The aspirator is something we sell to easily remove any headspace. Oftentimes, when you're pumping into a smart barrel bag, you might entrain some air or gas, CO2 from the fermentation, whatever. So you connect this to the sampling port on top and push a button, it's cordless, it's rechargeable, and it will suck out all the headspace. You can also use it to sample the wine, because after the headspace goes, the wine comes next. Now you'll need one of these because you need to take it around to each of your smart barrel dip tubes and take whatever sample you want. But you will need one aspirator for your installation. So look at some of the applications of Smart Barrel. There's obviously a transfer of wine for settling. You come out of primary fermentation, you have to settle out the yeast, the dead yeast, uh, other stuff that made it through the press. That's one application. Storage and aging. Uh, additives, putting in oak chips, and we'll show you that in a minute. Also, it's a very useful system for blending, for transportation, and as a bottling tank. You can also use to handle side fractions in the winery. You're doing something, you take a cut, say from a press, and you're not sure if you want to keep it or not. But this is not the time to make that decision. So with the smart barrel, you can just grab a liner, get a drum, put that uh, 50 gallon side fraction in there, aspirate it, take all the headspace out, and leave it alone. It's good for months now. When the season's done, you can come back and taste it and look at it and decide are you going to use it or blend it or discard it. So it's really handy because in the heat of battle, you don't want to running around looking for a clean tank of the right size. Also, you can use it as a topping reservoir. So even if you're using conventional barrels for aging and storage, it's a very nice way to have a topping reservoir. It doesn't require any topping itself. So this is kind of how the process works in racking. For red wine, we typically go into what we call a high permeability bag. Uh, this allows some oxygenation, and I'll talk about that in the next slide a little bit. So typically, you want to leave the wine here for one to three months. You're oxidating it slightly, you're letting all the gross leaves settle out. After this point, you're going to go to a second stage, where you're going to now go to a low permeability bag, because now the red wine is not really taking up oxygen you really don't want to now oxidize it. So you go to this low permeability bag and you can stay here for a year, maybe even longer. And you can bottle from here, blend from here, or you can go all the way down and store it in barrels, liner barrels obviously, uh, for many years to let it age properly. With white wines, a similar process, except we don't micro oxidate. We just go right into a low permeability bag um, and then maybe one or two more rackings and down to the bottom line. Advantages. No headspace. It's all in liners. No topping, no oxidation. They're single use, there's no cleaning. You can take samples, you can take wine, you can take off 20, 30 gallons, don't worry about it. The rest of the wine, there's no headspace. There's no tankage needed. 
So there's no cost, no installation, no permits. You can add tanking when you need it. You, you need um, 500 gallons of storage, bring in two smart barrel containers, you have it right there. When you're done with it, fold them up, out of there. Very convenient. Also, if you don't have cooling, you can use our Go Cooler accessory, uh, which we generally sell for the Go Fermenter. This is a, a stainless steel cooling plate that sits on the bottom of the, uh, below the bag, below the liner, and you can pipe that to glycol chilled water, and you can even use a temperature probe from the Go Fermenter line, and you can store your wine at whatever temperature you want. So you could have a warehouse where you have your whites uh, staying at, say, 50, and you have your reds at say 65 because you want to encourage malolactic fermentation in the, red, in the red. You don't want it in the white. So by you doing this kind of trick, you can actually have different racking temperatures, which I think are going to have a significant influence on the quality of the end result. I mentioned microoxygenation. Uh, you know, in wineries, it's a complicated process. It's a bit tricky. You can overoxygenate. It's an expensive, complicated process. What we've done is that we have chosen plastics that have a certain constant permeability. So we know the surface area of the liner. Uh, you know the volume of the liner. So you know how much oxygen is going in through the plastic into the wine. And so if you use a high permeability plastic, it's about five times that of a typical barrel. So you can use this to judge how long you want it to stay in this high permeability bag. The low permeability bags are typically the permeability of one-tenth of a barrel. So there you essentially have no significant oxygen permeability. Oaking is very simple. You can use all kinds of wood products. You basically add them to the two-inch uh, tri-clamp port on each smart barrel liner. Uh, we generally use staves, uh, cubes are a nice choice. The nice thing about oak products is it's a wide choice. You can get uh, Hungarian oak, French oak, American oak, uh, different toast levels. So it gives you a lot of freedom in what you can do in the oaking process. It's also sustainable. We're not taking down a whole tree to make five barrels and throwing out the rest of the wood. We are not making expensive furniture. We're using basically wood waste products, and but they're toasted in the same cooper juice that make high quality barrels. So you have all that quality that you would get from a proper smoking operation. It's very inexpensive. One of the really uh, odd facilities we have with the smart barrel is the ability to stop the oaking. You know, in a conventional barrel, oak barrel, you're obviously oaking from the barrel itself. So if you come to the point where you feel your wine is now over oaked, you don't have much of a choice. All you can really do is bottle it at this time. With our system, we just pump it out into a smart barrel liner that has no oak in it. Now remember, we're coming out that perforated tube. So all these oak products are retained in the start, that starting liner. So it's simply a matter of pumping the wine from one to the other. And since there's no oak in the second one, oaking stops. And my wife was a sommelier and our winemaker. She uses a lot because she finds that many times you're, you go to the tendency of over oaking and you're only oaking more because you have no alternative. But here it's really, really a simple way of doing it and very um, useful for a winemaker. Another thing is blending. You need to, you're going to pump three or four wines together and make a blend. Um, don't need a tank. Just get a smart barrel liner. That's your blending tank. There's no cleaning. It's available right away. Put it in a base and start pumping the wines into it. Let them sit for a few weeks just to make you know, the, sure the marriage will hold. Sometimes, you know, things don't work out as you uh, plan. And then you can, what we do is, and you can do it, we just connect that blending smart barrel liner to our bottling line. So we don't have to clean any tank. We don't have to worry about any, any cross-contamination from an older wine or a poorly cleaned vessel. And it saves a huge amount of time. One other feature that you may not be aware of is that if you use our go bases, now remember you can use your own macro bins as holders for the smart barrel liners. Uh, the dip tube is essential and it can be used in any container. But if you use our, our go bases, they have another feature that you might find interesting. They are DOT certified for transport. So they can be trucked, they can be moved around, 
Uh, when you buy a gold brace from us, you also get a lid. That lid locks down. You, we provide you with a tamper-evident cap on the bottom if you want, so you know if anybody's tampered with your wine during shipment. And the lower section of a gold base is a pallet skin. So you can lift it up by forklift, you can move it on a pallet truck. Um, so you can ship 300 gallons or so of wine very easily. I show you the closed container there, and I'll show you the, the open system. Now, you can use it in many ways. You can transport the wine within your facility. Say your blending area is in one part of the facility, your bottle line is somewhere else. Um, many wineries pipe it back and forth, but that means piping you have to clean, you have to make sure it's sterile, make sure it's not it's got junk in it. Here, you just pick up the liner containing the wine and just move it to where the bottling line is. You can do that. You can also, if you're selling your wine as bulk, sell it in the container. Just fill up the smart barrel container and call them up to pick it up on their pickup truck or truck and off goes your 300 gallons of wine. And they can then, when they get it, they can use it, fold the container down and ship six of them together back to you. So think about using, this is a transport system. The other thing I want to talk about is using it as a topping reservoir. And many of our customers use this. They have conventional barrels, uh, they like barrels for whatever reason, everybody has their uh, idiosyncrasies. Uh, now a typical barrel loses about one to three gallons per year per barrel. And it really depends on how humid the cellar is. If your cellar is well humidified, your losses are going to be in the one gallon or less. If it's not well controlled, it'll be in the higher end. Now, the problem is that if you go, if you lose a gallon or so in a barrel, you've got headspace up there. So you have to monitor it, and typically every two months uh, or so, you have to make sure that the level hasn't dropped. Now, the level will drop because there's evaporation, there's leakage. So one thing you can do is you take one of our smart barrels, put it into one of the inexpensive vertical drums, um, buy yourself a small pump. This one is for more wine. Uh, it can pump, I think, uh, a gallon a minute or something like that uh, through small hoses. Because remember, we're not filling this barrel with this pump. We're only going to put in maybe a half gallon or one gallon, whatever it takes to top it off, right? So you keep this one uh, smart barrel with the topping wine in one location. You can put it on a roller on dolly if you like, and just go to each barrel and just top it off with the pump. Now, as you remember, the, there's no headspace in the smart barrel. So as you keep using this wine up, the liner just keeps contracting. So you don't have to worry about topping the topping barrel. And also you don't have to worry about having different containers. It, typically people have a five gallon carboy for topping. Then it, you only have two gallons left. You go into another bottle and so on and so forth. Here it just stays in one container, it's one lot, and you don't have to worry about it. So the wine there doesn't oxidize, you can store partial volumes. And like I said, just pump out what you need. Beautiful topping system. And of course you can use it for long term storage. Our whole cellar is smart barrels, and here you can see these are old uh, wood barrels that I think they were 50 bucks each or something, and they were cut out with our kit, we provide everything, and then fit it up with the smart barrels. Some of these uh, only have maybe 20 gallons in them, and they've been sitting like this for years. Um, and there's really no maintenance. With these smart barrels in the wood system, they have a transparent plexiglass cover. So you can actually just look inside and see what the bag is, is doing. It's nicely folded up, um, what's going on, how much is in there. Uh, very nice, and you can use the LP liners, low permeable liners for years of storage. And again, if you want to use the wine, just pump out what you need, and the rest just stays as it is. So no breakdown proofers, no bottles, carboys, bits and pieces, little drums, plastic tanks, forget about it. Just same wine, same system. No breakdown proofers, no top. So anyway, so that's our topic for uh, this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. Um, again, we tr we've tried to our system to minimize work. It, you know, we want to make wine. We, our work should be to making the wine better, not in running around cleaning tanks and uh, worrying about oxidation and so forth. This system is pretty much idiot proof. You can go on vacation for two months and nothing will happen to your wine in the gold liner. It will just sit there, completely protected. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the show. Um, hope we'll see you again in a couple of weeks. Um, I think the next show we're gonna do is gonna be about labeling. 
and how to work with the government to get the label that you want. And I hope you'll learn something there too. Anyway, previous episodes are on our website. Any questions, text me, uh, send me an email. Uh, if you want some topics for the future, let me know. Thank you very much. Take care.